Yes. Yeah. What? What do you want to say? <laughs> want to talk? We're live. Hey, welcome, sisters. Uh, more importantly, we're we're here to do an intervention of our father. <laughs> this is this is we we figured the best way to have an intervention with your dad is live. on a live stream. We got yeah. called up to yeah. come so dad, do an intervention <laughs> by Nate. <laughs> We're here to talk about how your patience has harmed us. <laughs> you need to be a little less patient. A little less patient. I think that I think that you know that all three of your children are less patient that's, that's than you true. are. Yes. And how did you go wrong? Yes. Where, where was it that uh, provoked all the impatience in your children? Uh, uh, watching the patience. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Maybe it was our viral mother. Our, uh, yes, I made a big break into uh, victim stardom. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, but let's start first by saying, poor mom, wish she could be here, but yeah. she's sacrificially babysitting. Yes, yes. well, um, sacrificially is wrong. She would much rather be babysitting if she, than yeah. be here. If she was, if she was, yeah, that's true. It's selfishly babysitting. Yes, but if if she were here, she would just be telling us to be nice. Yeah, what, what <laughs> like, we need be to be nice. We need to do is guard ourselves against envy. I mean, I saw that. Clip that went viral yesterday. That's like 2.7 million views now. And you worked hard with the flamethrower for a mere 300,000. <laughs> this baby, and this baby cost money. <laughs> and, there, and all the cameras has to say in a and sweet all the guys voice. Uh, the script writing, and we said we're going to be inflammatory. Nana, and, queen and, of cheesy uh, potatoes. Uh, she she, she, walks, she, did say she just walks in and talks about. You know, nonchalantly about a Patty Wonka. But and that was a long time ago too. That 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 clip was fished out of the archives. Oh yeah, yes. of a Somebody long time ago, fifteen went years ago or something. Very thoroughly through the archives to find that. But so it was fifteen years ago. I don't think about very thoroughly. I just think there's full, that much gold. <laughs> uh, a full twenty years before that. So, yeah. but meanwhile, I thought it was a really interesting. I didn't find out about it until it just was. imagine if they knew about the time you gave us bungee cords for Christmas. Just imagine. <laughs> that, <laughs> I mean, what were you doing? <laughs> That's all I could afford. Or, or the time that for, like, when mom would leave the house and dad's way of entertaining us was to, we put all the socks <laughs> and balled them up and this, he would sit on the couch and throw socks at us as we walked through that we tried to get through the living room without getting hit by socks. Or we did a turkey shoot from behind the couch. In, ter in terms of perpetuating the cycle, I can say I did. Fully play the sock game with my We've children. Done it. We also and the cycle of violence was passed on to <laughs> yeah. the next generation. Very likely. So let's I mean this the sock game was mom was gone, dad would roll up all the socks <laughs> in his sock drawer. <laughs> I probably she, made you guys roll them up. Well, yeah, you would yeah. tell us to go hunt that down was part all of the, the socks. Bring me the socks. With the well, let me just say, proving your fundamental selfishness, you made us <laughs> roll all the socks. And then we would get behind the couch. Or like we we did kind of like a duck hunt version, but there was like a walking by with a slipper balancing, and Dad would try to knock the, the slipper, slipper off of the top of our head with a rolled up sock, <laughs> or or we would just be doing Pop Goes the Weasel behind the couch and be trying to hit it. So we'd be. I distinctly remember though. That's when I learned because it wasn't it how you had to fold socks in the Navy. Yep. You had to roll them up. Yeah, into, into projectiles. So we yeah. so we learned at that time how in the Navy one rolls a sock. Yeah. Or a so how, how one rolls a sock for the best. Yeah. Really best yeah. Uh, yeah. throwing. And so that was those were good yeah. times. They I, were great Dad times. has hit me with a sock. We need to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's. Uh, While I laughed myself can, sick, yeah. you hit me with a sock. <laughs> But I have come to, in my old age, understand that this was understand abuse. this was abusive. <laughs> yes, yes, and is why all the dogs die in my books. I, when I looked, I went briefly last night after I found out that I had become such a star, a, such, such a, a victim, oh, such a poor victim. Me. No, you got your get out of jail free card. It was an amazing hard time I had, and I just and I. <laughs> this doesn't it, help, by the way, because you posed as a victim our entire childhood. <laughs> so, so now that you finally have achieved it, yeah, finally, I, it's what I was hoping for. All all along it's what i've been striving for um, but now that it's finally come to me i don't know what to do with it I'm it's like victimhood is thrust upon but some people yeah when i saw it i was like yeah it was like an empathy you were once flash commanded mob. it was a sh it was a <laughs> shocking but an empathy flash mob that would like to see mom rot in jail well that's the thing it was <laughs> so funny as it was like out the, the wazoo the <laughs> tender it's that the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel and you have all these people being Poor Rachel when she was three. I hope CPS 
took her and her mother is rotting in jail. <laughs> like, I'm. Oh, pardon, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Your... That doesn't sound like kindness that you're <laughs> no. offering me here. Like, this no. sounds like a really. You mean I could have been in the foster that system? That time <laughs> when I got grumpy at the Busby's house. <laughs> that, oh, that time let's tie them into this scandal <laughs> at the E Free Pastor's house. Let's get them. Let's get the, them in. I, I, at the Busby's house, you had a bad attitude, and Mom made you control that, your emotions. <laughs> How dare times. she? But this is the thing that really struck me. Just I did not. I have not. I did not dive deep. I blew past a lot of this, so yes. I don't know. I don't even know the bulk of the arguments. However, the thing that really stood out to me about this is I was like, well, you people, I think you're cruel parents. Yeah. Like <laughs> these are the people who are all advocating for if your little girl says, I think I'm a boy yeah. to chemically Chop her up. make her infertile forever. Yeah, get and those if you think out, that quick. my loving, faithful, tender Christian mother was cruel, well then we're equal. I think, <laughs> I think you're cruel. <laughs> And well, you apparently think that my life is let's cruel. Let's have a this sock is, fight. This is related. This is related actually to uh, something. The penny, a certain epistemic penny, dropped for me today on this. Uh oh, because um, I thought we talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to keep doing the interventions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever, Tell us all about what, this whatever, epistemic whatever penny. Whatever you intervene on, I've got more. <laughs> so. so um, Boz Tavidjian, of, of course, piled into the... the oh, did he? The oh, did he? He's yeah. still here? Rachel. He's, Boz. Yes, I always thought he was I like thought, a hologram. No. That he okay. might at some point just be shut down. Go ahead, though. I want well, to hear ahead, this. He the... or his similitude um, <laughs> piled in. And uh, Julie Royce and he were going back and forth <laughs> talking about these nut jobs in Idaho. Mm, okay? yes. And that was mm. the... These are nut jobs. They're, Salted cashews. <laughs> So the thing that struck me is that America is divided, and we've known that for years, and it's divided clean down the middle, and the, the two factions that are aware of the conflict were leaving out the big middle that's being pushed yeah. back and forth, mm -hmm. but the self-conscious um, woke types and the conservative acti activists, they, these are two rival definitions of insanity. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah. And, and the rival definitions of insanity, it works this way. We think that if you lived in a world where nobody restrains their emotions, you're living in an asylum. It's right. yeah. Yeah. it's hell. It's it's just so we even we, worse an asylum with no straight jackets and no cell doors. Yeah. It just uh, mm -hmm. as, so we would define that Old as bedlam. insanity, bedlam, just bedlam, total mm -hmm. pandemonium. That's insanity for us. No restraint on our passions or emotions or affections, whatever. And they are defining it the same way, only the opposite. They think that any discipline of, squelching of, defying of, contradiction of the passions yeah. mm -hmm. is insanity. Right. So... Um, so consequently, never, you, ever, ever train the horse. Yeah, never. But, but yeah. this is the thing is that they should be like, uh, like, I guess this isn't a more serious way to in, engage with this, but there were a ton of comments like poor little baby who just was expressing a very natural feeling. Well, there are so many natural feelings that civil civilization relies on people governing and suppressing <laughs> and like mothers. And this is the thing when I said, I think that they're cool. Take it way back from transgender type things right. to just imagining some of these people who are expressing so much empathy with me being my mother, being like, lean into these feelings and let me wrap you up in a Snuggie and never control yourself and go ahead, lay here on the kitchen floor, screaming kicking. and kicking yeah. and yeah. frothing at the mouth. But the reason that they want to do that is because the grown up parents want to do that. And the, like in their own yeah. version. And, the and they do gift, it at the kids too. And the gift and the reason it's so comic to me, to hear people talking about mom like she was a crazy, crazy tyrant, manipulative, whatever, is that we grew up with the enormous gift of a mother who required obedience of herself. Yeah. And because she would apologize if she, like, if, if my tone of voice was unkind, you know, like, forgive me for having, you know, whatever. Yeah, always. So she enforced things, obviously, as that story she told with <laughs> us, but she enforced them with herself Primarily, and so a well, lot of people were saying, "Because I was a boy." <laughs> <laughs> a I, should, of, I should say here that one of the helping. things you're not one helping. of the <laughs> things I want to say I want to I want to see if I can generate as many terrible 
like out of context quotes as possible yeah. in this one live stream. So how about this, huh. Dale Donut? Oh, <laughs> we've both been also, known to also. That's say your it. description of unbelievers. Like no, not really. just constantly. We drive around. With it's the more your down description of Jeff, Jeff okay. Bezos's mistress now featured in Vogue. Right. But mm. anyways, I would just say that in our home, the girls were disciplined, and I never was. <laughs> Let's grab that. Let's <laughs> run with it. Uh, also, I, but you're, I would say a qualification. You're not, but, uh, a qualification. Yeah. I might get to a story, but a qualification would be Nate was disciplined plenty. He just didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I will say this about mom, though. I This is the mom who I, I remember the day that I was bored out of my mind and refusing to be in bed for my nap. And she was trying to counsel in the living room and she told me to go be busy. Oh, and I, I decided to put 40 plus nails in my wall. Yeah. Like over forty, straight nails. through a poster, and I yeah, yeah very I with a. The, was it with, the Seattle Seahawks? Yep, and, right it, and I love the Seahawks, and I love my poster, but with all the short-term thinking of a child, <laughs> I went straight through it because that was the line, and it reached that, and I kept going because I had more nails. At the end of that, I was not disciplined. Like yeah, I now. put more than forty nails in the wall. <laughs> When I was supposed but to, I want to just clarify because she told not me to because you busy. were a boy that you were not disciplined. This is oh, yeah, yeah. No, my <laughs> point, my <laughs> point is, we're the ones who gave you the tool chest yeah. for Christmas. You gave me the little toolbox, and Mom told me to go keep busy. <laughs> and so, because she told me to go keep busy, she felt like yeah, also because she heard we'll you making instruct. a ton of noise, yeah. she thought things were going. She thought well. things were good yeah. because it was when it was things were silent that I was really dangerous. Yeah. So we could go ahead. It's November. We're not supposed to have qualifications, so you can go ahead and say that. I was disciplined plenty. I too am a victim, and I should not be blamed <laughs> for anything jealous. I've ever done. He's a little jealous that but I rose to start a I, I do. Person. I do just think we should like get these out of context quotes, like so, about the time we all robbed the bank in Puyallup. <laughs> You know, I said, like that. do you remember when I stole the manuscript for Loving the Little Years off of Christine Peck's hard drive? Yes. Because she wrote that. it and I took it and I published and it she's as not my own her one right. words. She's not gotten one thin dime. <laughs> what did you do? He robbed a bank. I did that. What did you no, do? No, we all did. Child. We robbed We did together. I'd okay. also like to say Angelic. that as an organized crime family, we should probably live stream less. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like the approach. Yeah. I don't know. The For Biden, a criminal empire. The Bidens do well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. okay. They, they're on TV all the time. I was and, wondering if I should talk about the time that Prince Andrew took me to that island in the Caribbean. Oh, my word. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're right. I, think that, I think the intervention we, we need, Rebecca, <laughs> yeah. lets you and I yeah. Good yeah. luck. <laughs> See if you can find the brakes over there. <laughs> we haven't found them yet this no, far into our life. Say, we've been looking. but I would say, though, some other comments in it was that no way did we have a functional relationship. Like, I guarantee that little girl does not speak to her mother anymore or whatever. Oh, really? and I thought, well, you know what? We have a a singularly non-manipulative emotional yeah. mother. Like we do not have an emotionally unstable no. right. mother and everything. And I love that people are like, they only say that they're happy because they don't know yet how darkly abused they actually I'll are. I'll find and out you know, when I'm 80. We there's used to, nothing we to used argue to joke, uh, Well, there's something to joke about. We, we used to joke about, we used a little uh, wooden spatula usually for... Mm. And we used to joke about having a holster made for Nancy. <laughs> because she was yeah. good. I'll, t I'll take responsibility for that particular, yeah. the, the need for that joke. That's true. But mom said earlier today, she was like, well, it was, it was my turn finally to get in trouble. Actually, she, <laughs> said, she said, you said, know, it's about time. I doubt you know. she noticed. No, I think people probably they, had no, to tell her. No, she didn't. We told I mean, she yeah, was told did. about it because she's not on Twitter, but she was like, well, it was probably said, my well, turn. It's a privilege. And then the funny part is she said, it really hasn't. I really haven't. Nothing like this has happened to me. Your dad gets in trouble, but I don't. I said, Mom, I think you said the same thing when the Vice article came out about you. And she was like, oh, that did happen. And I was like, yeah, you've already done been targeted, Mom. You've done been. <laughs> this, is, this is not your first rodeo. You just didn't worry so hard about the first no. one that you forgot right. it. So I mean, not like even she the said first one. Feces smeared on the house and the used condoms in the mailbox and, and somebody she's gotten the broke treats. into the house and stole a plate. The best, the best <laughs> ever was that the was time. the weird that I, that should we should yeah. say that was a weird one. Someone broke into the house. The um, left footprints, the left footprints across, <laughs> and the table was set for a dinner coming up. A big Sunday dinner. A Sunday yeah. dinner, yeah. and they came in and took one plate. Yeah. And, and walked left. out. And left. Although and left. the Fled best the scene. I, I don't think that, that was the best. Plate. The best <laughs> one was when we came home 
to find the suspicious photojournalist who did not know it was daylight savings. <laughs> because that was because the best. That was the they best. usually, this is before the smartphone just updates you about the time, they thought we were all going to be in church At right church. now. So it's, it's a big telephoto lens creeping around on... <laughs> <laughs> on our property. In the middle of the property, grass. Like in, in the middle of the grass with around the camera. Taking pictures and we knew who she was so it made it much funnier because we came home on time but <laughs> surprisingly <laughs> early for her. And... <laughs> The thing is, there and she you, was. you talked to her, right? Yeah, hey. yeah we just remember like, hey. saying, hey, what you doing on my parents' lawn? And she goes, I'm not. <laughs> and she's like literally in the middle of the grass with, with the, the camera. camera. <laughs> and she was like, I'm not. I'm not on their property. And it was just a beautiful moment. It was, a good, it was a good time. A good time. Yeah. But that that was the best use of daylight savings that oh. I've experienced. <laughs> Generally, I'm opposed to daylight savings, except for... <laughs> but that was good. In that, that, that was good. in that particular case. I, I do think there's so much funny, like so much humor in our childhood, like so much laughter and story time mm -hmm. and just party. Like it was just a mm -hmm. lot of... Poor kid party for a long, for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, poor, a poor kid party. Is, is, go ahead and laugh. It it's really cost funny, but I will, I will say, like when it's I think true. about, like, so the the first time when people started to pay attention, media wise, uh, after like Canon, like Canon Press was started in the living room, you know, mm -hmm. of our, I don't know if it was our duplex, at the time. Um, or where, like, the whether the no, Autumn street Shadow, street. Autumn I mean, Shadow it was, was your the bedroom, street. the desk in your bedroom on okay. East Street. East Street, okay. But Autumn's Autumn Shadow was the very first okay. thing you did. It wasn't Canon, but I it was your it first. I thought it was Dr. Gumprick's book. Maybe. Uh, I don't remember which was first, first one I was aware of. Was I was just a poor abused child. Autumn Shadow, Shadow which was kind of like remember. a creep. We should reissue that one. But <laughs> it's so that was being published. You're getting into this. You started writing. Uh, articles in the daily news. I remember that. We started getting cross. hate mail. People hated you locally. But the first time you, like, a bunch of attention started coming from outside, one of the first times I was aware of it, at least, was after you started ACCS uh, in 94, and schools all over the country started sprouting up copying Logos. And now hundreds and hundreds of schools, both right. in ACCS and outside, modeling off of Logos. Hundreds of don't thousands. For, don't of forget to call it my empire. Yeah, yeah. Which you, of course, <laughs> control. Billions tuition, tuition, and empire. all of them mm -hmm. comes well yeah. is transferred directly into your offshore accounts. Yeah. Um, and you almost as made as much off ACCS as you have from all those payments from the ATF. <laughs> but, but it's um, so. I remember a journalist coming from World Magazine, which existed at the time, and it came out to the house we were building. Um, which was because you were very hip and cutting edge and set all trends, all reclaimed lumber. <laughs> um, because we That's helped, right. because That's we right. helped tear down a reclaimed shed on the University of Idaho thrifted, campus, thrifted and we were lumber. we were building out uh, out of this yeah. stuff. I remember he came out. I was early high school, and I was packing quickcrete to our disaster of a slab. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I was I was packing concrete, and then this article came out, and it was very complimentary, yeah. and it. And it was the first time like I'd showed up, yeah. you know, by name in print. Yeah. And it was this really like weird comment because the, the our journalist was a nice guy, but he was a small guy. And he, he did this big thing about how I was packing 50 pound bags of quickcrete like it was nothing. <laughs> and I got crucified by my friends for this. I mean, like, they were like 50 pounds. Like it's like on the football team. You're like, like listen, I, was, I didn't I was ask him to and say I that. And I was like, it was 85. They were 85 <laughs> pounds up and up and down the ladder. But it, it was, it was the worst. And the thing is to this day, it's way more comfortable to be hated. It's a way I, I would much prefer oh. people throw mud pies than do any kind of groveling, any kind of, Oh, I mean, I, the, my my favorite fan conversations have been with people who came up and started swearing at me. <laughs> you know, it's like people who are mad. The people who come up and are like massive fans, it's just awkward. I don't know what to do. I'm like, do you have a, well, a it, tomato I'm, you could throw? It'd be a little more comfortable. I would I would <laughs> echo that. It's it's much more difficult to know what to do or to say with people who are effusive yeah. and appreciative. I we appreciate the appreciation. But you still don't know what to say or where to look. I don't think it's appreciation. I think it's an unhealthy kind of fanfare. Over the top. Yeah. Because when somebody comes and says, hey, your book was super helpful for me and whatever, I'm like, thank the Lord. Great. Where yeah. are you from? Moving on. I don't need to yeah. actually. It doesn't upset me 
and right. it doesn't. You don't jump it also what was your favorite part? It's also not. Yeah. <laughs> Which thing touched you the most? Deeply? Oh, mm-hmm. if you would tweet that. <laughs> and tag me, I would feel better. Leave no, I, I'm not. Me. It's great when people want to pass on that God used something yeah. that you did, hoping it would help someone, that it helped them. That's great. Yeah. But it's it's a imbalanced love. If somebody feels an imbalanced level of no qualifications, tell me what I should do. I whatever you say, I love. I'm like something's wrong. Well, but we've noticed over the years that. Those are also the biggest haters later. They're the people who like, well, it's kind of like with a little kid where the the line between just laughing and crying is almost yeah. infinitesimal. <laughs> like once they get into an emotional thing, it can switch to any emotion pretty easily. I feel like Which you've the, got to, that's why you got to discipline for that <laughs> exactly. stuff. That's why you got to call but people Dale Donuts. Get, just, just when dropping you get that somebody in who's like an over the top fan, sometimes that's just as easy for them to become an over the top hater. Like not yeah. all the or, time, but or you know to what I not mean? Like, even pay attention to what you're actually trying to say, but to just during one of our early like, wasn't wasn't the first rodeo, but during one of the early ones, I uh, back when we were mutton busting, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with, <laughs> with a little plastic helmet. I still am. I'm permanently three. <laughs> so uh, uh, we had this explosion over something, and I Amazon was very fresh then. And I went on looking for a book, and then they suggested to me this other book, and I found this whole cottage industry that was dedicated to to snarls in the church. Yeah. And one of I so I ordered some, and there were some quite good books. But one of them uh, said a pastor when he was called to a new church and he was candidating at the church, he said, "I always learn to watch the person who picked me up at the airport." Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the, mm-hmm. the pastor, this pastor is going to come in and he's going to fix everything. And I'm going to, and I'm I've here got, with the grievance. And truck. I will steward I've, him I've got, to the I've problems. Got the, I've got the grievance. Truck. I've arrived with your real agenda. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I've got, I want to quick recruit him to, mm-hmm. to fill him in on how yeah. things, what things are going on around here. Yeah. And I lear- also learned that it's like pastors all over the country are all putting on a production of Hamlet. Uh, everybody's doing the same play. It's the same. It's, yeah. it's the same yeah. play. And so you could get a, 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 at a conference of pastors. One of the pastors could say, Who, who's playing Ophelia in your production? Yeah. You know, who's, yeah. who's, who's playing? There's this? nothing new under the sun. Who's, who's Polonius in your production? Yeah. And yeah. everybody's got one. Yeah, yeah, they do. They <laughs> it's, do. It's, it's, it's really astonishing. That's hilarious. I do think one of the things that is a weird family culture thing that you probably gave us but I don't know how much it was nature and how much it was nurture. But this is, this is I think, shared by all of us, what Nate was saying, more comfortable with criticism than the other way around, is that it's not... Um, sometimes I will get... Because Instagram is particularly a field where women work it for a particular kind of... Sex buzz. Yeah, there's, a, there's an exchange going on on Instagram, mm-hmm. which I have found out if you post a selfie... Everyone will love you. Mm-hmm. If I post a "You Go, Mama," it's amazing. I don't know. You do. I don't know who needs to hear this. I don't know who needs to hear this, but Mama, your heart, your heart is doing great things for whoever. He doesn't you. get you. If, and, and you're okay, amazing. but I have to say, a lot of the time, I do believe encouragement needs to be said. So it's not like it's. I'm not saying it's an untrue thing. I might post something that I think needs to be said, but it is encouraging. Everyone will tag a ton of people. I will get a huge flood of new followers. So then you have to do a little department of hell no, and then they will all leave. Like you just kind of swing back and forth between whatever. Right. But what I was going to say is I do get from women pretty often questions about how do you even handle all of that? Like, doesn't it all just go wildly to your head, all of the thank <laughs> yous and the encouragement or the people who appreciate what you said? And that is the thing I thought that's interesting because I think a lot of people are in social media for that exact Right. What if what if it all went to your head to the total peg by sixth grade? <laughs> <laughs> so then it, you can't really. I think the anymore. thing that I actually meant is not liking that kind of. Yeah. That like yeah. I I enjoy very much hearing that things have been fruitful that God has used something yeah. in different ways. So like when a woman walks up to me and says, "Guess what? Because of your podcast, I made a pie," <laughs> and her husband who was next to her went. <laughs> that to me was just like God is good. Like I love that. That's wonderful. 
thank you for telling me. I nothing feels questionable yeah. about that kind you can of exchange. Retire now. I feel like I've done my work here. <laughs> See you later. But but if it is just the fanfare, that's not what we're looking for, and it's not something that is encouraging. Even it's something that is it's just awkward. It's just, well, it's yeah. just a fact of it. Well, happened, I think I, I think to the what you were saying earlier, Becca, about how quickly the emotions can change. If people are steered by their emotions, yeah. if the wagon is hitched to emotions out front, it doesn't much matter if those emotions are currently in a good place. Mm -hmm. Those emotions yeah. can be in a good place, going towards a, going towards a good yeah. place. It's just super dangerous. But they will as soon as the feels change because yeah. the days are shorter, there's not as much sunshine, sunshine vitamin D is down. Those yeah. emotions will change and they're going yeah. to you know, inevitably take the wagon with it. And so you, you just can't trust any anyone who's leading that way, anybody yeah. who who is well, the illustration uh, feels forward is, that way. Uh, your emotions, everybody's emotions, fluctuate. They go yeah. up. And, they go up and yeah. down. And if you build your Hopefully. life, if you build your life on top of the emotions, then when yep. they go up and mm -hmm. down, every everything is destabilized. Everything goes up and down. But if you uh, build the foundation, is cold, hard concrete of covenant commitments. This is what we said we were going to do. This is what the Bible says to do, whether or not you feel like it. That's the yeah. The concept of duty. Uh, the duty, yeah. Responsibility and mm -hmm. duty in small moments. Like yeah. What's your, when you have a little kid who's being annoying and just spilled the milk, you as a parent still have a duty a in that in that moment. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so your emotions are built on top of that, and they go up and down. Well, the foundation yeah. stays where it ought to be. And then after a while, your emotions say, you know, this is not getting us anywhere. <laughs> you know, I, I need to settle down. And that's what it is to discipline your, um, discipline your emotions, which is not the same thing as nuking your emotions or, or insulting or your emotions or not having them. So it's like I, I compare emotions to little kids. And people think that if your kids are well behaved, that you don't have kids. Right. right. If you if your you're kids, boring children or you're boring yeah. children, yes, ma'am, and and they go do it. Well, that that's so terrible because they're not alive or spontaneous or whatever. No, they're disciplined and they can work much more productively. They can play much more fruitfully. I also think they that your emotions actually are because if they are being faithful, if they're if they are being consistent with your duties and faithful, they are in a way truer, which means that in many ways you experience things far more strongly when you are like in a good way, if that makes sense. Not mm -hmm. not wild emotions of depression or whatever, but you actually feel if you're disciplining your own self and your own emotions, your love for your children has, it's not just something that blew by me today that I enjoyed. It's something that is actually like your love is expressed through obedience and doing things that the Lord honors and is, and it fuels a godly emotion that you should have and not, right. it's yeah. not like, so should I say something that, that will excite some Try. pushback initially? Mm. We can't and, know oh, wait, what will and what won't. From my sisters? No, from, per chance? From, from, from anybody. <laughs> from anybody. So from the let's, internet? let's say, that's easy. let's say out of all these hurt people that pile into these comments and this is abusive and terrible. Da -da -da -da. And also the hurt bots. Let's include the hurt bots. Yeah, the hurt bots. There are. <laughs> hurt bots. Poor yes. little AI. Uh, yeah. The hurt people who are being who are managing a hundred different <laughs> handles Accounts, and, yeah. and the bots. Okay. Yeah. All the hurt. Russian, all the hurt things. The Russians. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, let's say out of all those people, I don't speaking pastorally here. I don't have any doubt that a number of them grew up in straight laced conservative homes that were no fun at all, yeah. right? And yeah. right, that so dad was severe, mom was severe, everything was uh, cinched tight, and nobody ever laughed about anything. Mm -hmm. And they think, th so th when they hear something like what we're talking about, discipline or um, high standards or required obedience or whatever, they filter that through the grid of their experience. And they think they they think there's no way that that's not exactly like what I grew up with. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing the the thing is, there is such a thing as goo families where you have everything is bleh all over the place. Mm -hmm. 
a, a, just emotional sprawl. And then you have the people who are buttoned up, yeah. no, no emotions at all, uh, immigrants from northern Scandinavia. <laughs> and or but they but they leave everything really hard. Yeah, yeah but they pressure, and they leave it. They say cutter. they say we're unemotional, but they leave out the fact that anger is an emotion. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so yeah. they're and explosive. And <laughs> yeah, those are all emotions. And and so if someone says, yeah, well, that's the that's I've seen that with my own eyes. Well, I have too, plenty of times. Yeah, I've, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've I've seen no, that. No, plenty, sort of plenty of the evangelicals were actually driven there. Yeah, no, Chase, and actually yeah. lived through horrific. Family life debacles. Yeah. So, I would just like to say, for the least the last five seconds, there's been a whole lot of empathy here. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, so what were you? But what yeah, were you going to say? Yeah. You were about to say something else. So <laughs> the the point is, um, I would say that the the tell the thing that you want to um, look for is is this a family that laughs together? Yeah. Um, and so so for example, I've sometimes had um, pretty <clears throat> gnarly marriage situations in. Uh, in my office, and and sometimes it's they're in the same planet, different worlds. They just can scarcely speak to each other. Everything yeah. is toxic. Everything's but wrong. but then th you have people come in, and there's marriage problems, and there there's hurt and stuff to work through. But they still laugh at one another's jokes. Yeah, yeah. Right? There's hope. And I think when I see that, I think okay, I've got handles to work with. Mm -hmm. you, you're still there's affection and there's rapport. A, yeah. there's affection rapport. You <clears throat> get one another. Um, and and there like, is and it shows up in in I can, to, to, That's really important, and I think that, with, especially with this whole month, and you were talking at the beginning of the month about apocalypse proofing families and wanting to like hand out stuff. How do you get a a resilient family or a family that loves each other? And I, as the key I key is have, dad jokes. He yeah, lots of dad jokes. I think the the key is, and I look I look That's back on. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. I was like interesting. I interesting. like the uh, I go all the way back early, <laughs> early, and I think one of the things that's unique here was unique in our home, at the dinner table and so on was the ability to have really loud, raucous debate and disagreement mm -hmm. without people getting in their feels or getting like feel forward, and. Yeah. And if if there if people did cross the line, there were apologies made. But we are capable of having very loud, long disagreements. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know all three of us have, across the decades, gone at you really hard <laughs> on things. Infant and baptism was yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, my no sisters are still Baptists for the record. No, but the but the point the point <clears throat> is there that the the ability to have an argument with a friend, the ability to have an argument with a sibling, with a parent. Where there is no doubt of the affection, it's all the whole argument takes place in an ecosystem of love and affection and right. safety. Like yeah. it was a very safe home. Yep. There was not volatile parents or not or, anger. Well, discipline, say, discipline was never a violent or unsettling. No, thing but I when, think that those homes you're talking about with the like ultra strict, ultra you know rigid. At least my experience with the ones I've seen more close up. Um, they fought like yeah. one another. It's like they might not laugh together, but man, did they fight. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge difference. We, you know argue. what I mean? Like, yeah. like there's but not fighting. There wasn't I common broke ground windows. other than not well, all fighting. of us have an anger problem <laughs> with you know? the baseball. So it was like it was untethered yeah. emotions, but not. The I, right. I, yeah, bro but I broke windows with argue. apples and golf balls and I, footballs and lacrosse balls say, and no, there's actually, no anger. I think you know? I was in seventh grade when you became Pato Baptist. Yeah. So that's not smart. I think you were eighth because I was a senior. I was definitely in junior high. Mm -hmm. It was not really smart. I was not admirable. An eighth grade girl <laughs> is not a theological <laughs> powerhouse. No, but I didn't <laughs> buy it. Right? Like. Right. <clears throat> you became, and I don't think you did either. I don't remember, but I remember you no. became Peter Baptist. And we're having dinner table conversations, and you're explaining it. And I had really big insights <clears throat> to say, but Dad, that just seems so Catholic. <laughs> I think that was the bulk of my theological <laughs> argument. Um, but as we talked a lot, we talk, I was just like, baptizing a baby is just we do it at the river. We go down to the river, you know, and we do it. This is the way we do it. And so, but you didn't. It wasn't like. Tough luck, Rachel. You are Pado Baptist now. Right. You were like, we'll keep talking about it. We'll keep our. We'll keep discussing it. There were no hard feelings in any right. direction, and I discovered that I was in fact persuaded when I went to school and a boy yeah. in my classes. 
yeah, well, your dad believes that you should baptize babies. I was like, well, this is the thing. Scripture, <laughs> scripture does require it. And then <clears throat> I realized that all those weeks of discussion at the dinner table, I had been thor thoroughly persuaded, but I was yeah. just holding out on my high hill of it's Catholic and I won't bend on this issue. At home. And, but, uh, at home. <laughs> but, but when I realized at school that, I, too, am a pedo baptist Well, that's so how I, I ended up getting convinced was I would go home and argue at the dinner table as a Baptist. Then I'd yeah. go to school and would present all the arguments that I had just heard <laughs> last night to friends who were also coming at me about it. And so at school, I was a pedo baptist At home, my true self was a Baptist <laughs> until I talked myself out of arguments. And I would really. just like to say, yeah. upon first presentation, <laughs> I said, that makes sense. Mm. And I was on mm. board. I will say like, this is he so, was always the preferred, <laughs> uh, less emotional. We'll mm. say just the less. Some but, of us, some of us were led by our feels sometimes. I think, but I, I would say also as as far as the ability to have conflict and friendship and affection, to disagree, uh, like <clears throat> we disagreed all the time. Like we get together now and we, we still do. We rumble <laughs> and wrestle around things and, because and that's well. what we do for fun. <laughs> then it's. But, Although, uh, and, and, and incidentally, I grew up in a fa family like that. Yeah. So um, debating uh, was, a, was a indoor sport. Same thing sport. for my kids, and I know for your kids, like the, the idea of debating at the table is a, is a big thing. Mm -hmm. I, like, I had a parent meeting last night for basketball and talked about how I wanted my players to have opinions and not just be docile. Mm -hmm. But if I could, like, Actually, if they have any thoughts, any criticisms, any concerns, I need them to come say it like into my eyes, like mm -hmm. any anything. That's important to me. And if they send a concern via a proxy, they are cut. <laughs> <laughs> like if I hear from your mom, right. your concern when you're a 17 year old boy, like it's it needs to be mm -hmm. you, and and you won't ever get in any kind of trouble For if it's you and you disagree with me and we have a conversation. There's yeah. not going to be any issues. Uh, but your mom means that you're you're planting seeds back there. You're undermining that relationship, and so on. So on that note, I have to ditch this and turn this into Doug and daughters. <laughs> if you two could complete the intervention, I have a call I have well, to get well, on in the background. I'm going to go be an extra, an uncredited extra in the background of this live stream. <laughs> he's, right. he's got important things. To do. <laughs> he's got Big important stuff. people to talk to. No, I don't know. I don't know about that. It's. <laughs> Yes. Well, I'm going to try. Anyway, see, try to behave. Have fun. Have fun try on your phone call. Yeah. Have fun. Well, um, I'm glad to be here as a guest on What Have You. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually had a thing I think we should talk about, unless there's something no, else I'm good. Go. that ties in with all this, because we were what we were talking about is the concept of Christian fellowship. But we just weren't using that word right now. But right. every time that when I am talking with people about the way your home should be or the aroma of your home, mm -hmm. it is fellowship and that's not I wouldn't have said that that's defined by the aroma of people who argue with each other and but it's defined by the aroma of people who acknowledge their own sin and get things right and well because like we did debate all the time but if someone was unkind or somebody lost their cool then yes. somebody put it right yeah <laughs> so, and, we, yeah the, the, it, <clears throat> the, the foundation is koinonia fellowship we're all together we're in fellowship. Nobody has a grievance against someone else. They might have an argument they want to present to someone else, right. but there's no no grievance, no malice uh, or backbiting. Or, yeah, yeah, that that had to be uh, ab utterly absent. And if we can circle back around, there's no conceivable way for it to be utterly absent unless you discipline for it. You, yeah. you, um, and it, it has to start early when the kids are little. Yeah. Uh, they come in. They come running into the room, whining or complaining or tattling on somebody, and you go, let's stop right there. Let's run back down the hall and come back in again with a completely different attitude. Let me see your cheerful face. <laughs> yeah, and, that and, and, and someone's going to say, but um, you're, they need to mean it. They have to be sincere. And I would say, well, give me a couple minutes and it'll be sincere. <laughs> uh, that is yes. funny. But I would yes. say a lot of the time, the thing that... It, and I think that this is a behind some of the misunderstanding is that fellowship is such a rare thing in the world right now that it goes in multiple different directions. Christians have no experience of it. Right. So there are Christian families that are like, what does it mean? What does it feel like? What does it look like? And they've never experienced it. So they actually don't think it's possible. 
Right. So they think that we are in many ways living in like a weird fantasy land. You know, like well, we're talking like we've experienced something that they're like, but we're Christians and I've never experienced I anything think that's like what that I was before in my life. Is that the houses that had so many rules and so yes. many standards and so many whatever apparently didn't have standards about your attitude because it was like there was there was so much fighting or so much anger or hatred honestly in in I think a lot of them that they didn't experience fellowship or, they didn't know what it was like or to maybe not have fear, angry parents fear based parenting so like if you went back and look at that episode where mom, what mom is saying she did if yeah. she was upset with me for complaining when right. she got there, if she was fearful that I didn't like her and that I liked my friend better than her, <laughs> or if, if she stung, was, yeah. or if she was like, oh, how could you? And then discipline me, that I can see the argument that that's manipulative, yeah. abusive, nasty, but I know mom and I know my <laughs> childhood and it was none of those things. Yeah. Like it was actually, and mom and I have um, now had 40 almost 43 years of a very sweet relationship <laughs> with no periods of uh, estrangement or no yeah. periods of estrangement straight through my teen years. Mom and I were still friends yeah. <laughs> like nothing like it's been a sweet relationship, oh. but you could put that same situation in what is actually normal for most people. Okay. And it would be yucky. Right. That's I think is a thing. So that, I think, um, I think we have a question. Oh, no way. We blocked him. <laughs> Not <you> know him. <laughs> Scotland. Yeah. Uh, he says, hey. He says hello. Hello back. Hi, yeah. Knox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a couple of the comments and then even just online, is it, uh, there's a sense in which they hear this and think, don't you know Proverbs aren't promises? Oh, yeah. This yeah. Feels, feels very uh, prosperity gospel of all of you. Yeah, pro Proverbs <clears throat> are not Euclidean. It's not like... Um, uh, a statement like all triangles have three sides. Pro Proverbs are general statements. Um, if someone's a lazy bum, he's going to have a poor harvest. If if you never change the oil in your car, you're going to have engine trouble. Is, sometimes you luck out. Sometimes that doesn't happen. But Proverbs are generally true. So consequently, if, uh, if you don't discipline your son, Proverbs says you hate your son. And sometimes you luck out. Uh, sometimes it's not, it doesn't end in disaster, but it, it, it is nevertheless generally true that if you train up a child in the way he should go, when he's old, he will not depart from it. Not because you're still hovering over him, cracking a whip either, <laughs> right. which is the weird, uh, it's like, I guess I keep coming back to this that people don't actually know what it's like to be in a Christian family where there is not a lot of Tension unconfessed and sin. And I think that that's the, what yeah. I was going to say is mom was not fear-based disciplining, but rather faith. She was trusting the Lord right. to grow me up to be a faithful Christian through her efforts. And never does a Christian parent really think that what they're doing is the magic key to making that happen. They think right. that what they're doing is honoring God who will bless faithfulness. But if, also, yeah, if God doesn't bless it, it's not going to happen. Nothing. We can't build the house yeah. if he is not in it. But nobody has this kind of objection when it's like, you know, you have an apple tree and you're wondering, how should I prune my apple tree so that it will be most fruitful? And you get onto the YouTubes and you watch the little, here's how you go about pruning a fruit tree. You don't get a lot of people getting upset and saying, Proverbs aren't promises. You know, <laughs> like, how do you know that if you prune it, it won't? It's right. like we all understand that like there are certain things that you do that produce a certain kind of result. And mm -hmm. we understand it in like every area of life. And, and I would flip it around in Proverbs particularly. When you have a lazy son, for example, uh, or a dissolute son or a son who doesn't work in harvest, Proverbs tells us that this is shameful for the parents. Right? Uh, yeah. But yeah. If, it, if, uh, if what they're saying is true, that these aren't promises and it's sort of a crapshoot and yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't matter how hard you work or, or how much you pray or what you, it, that does, doesn't, just doesn't matter because election doesn't care about any of that. Um, and then if something goes south, well, why should I feel shame then? Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I, I feel shame because it connects, because it's a disruption of the fellowship bond right. that ought to be a healthy one. 
but is in this circumstance a diseased one. And it's true that shame would be the totally wrong word to use if there was no connection between the two. You could say it's sad for his parents or, you know, whatever. But shame is a very, I mean, it's, very different thing. it's tied to your own Some kind of complicit in some work. Yeah. There was a woman who was really upset at me once for teaching works righteousness, as you know I do. Always. <laughs> always. Rachel uh, believes you can work your way to heaven. Always. Always <laughs> have. Always firmly will. on the record here. Just like to... I heard even exile is Nate, doing the same thing. Nate <laughs> left, and here we are providing <laughs> yeah, our own yeah. naughty sound bites. Uh, however, I do not believe that, but I never have. But if you ever talk about obedience, the ladies flip out. Yeah. Flip out. Yeah. And uh, But somebody said to me, in all dead seriousness, and she said... Listen, it does not matter to God if I feed thousands of people or if I kill all of my neighbors because it's all grace, you know? You're like, <laughs> 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 pardon? But, but that's the funniness of trying to say there's nothing, literally nothing we should do, you know? Yeah, pro tip, that's not how you guard grace. Yeah. <laughs> no, so it's like also, it's a lot of scripture is totally pointless if... if that was the case. This There's is probably a lot of very dodgy exegesis that I shouldn't be entering into on live broadcasts, but Dad can shut me down if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, we should have a open a line for Ben to call the day he hears of it and cancel out what she says. She's wrong. No, I was thinking about this the other day because of one of these little dust-ups where if Rachel and I ever start saying, here's how a Christian woman ought to behave, you do get a little cloud of people saying you rest in Christ, you do not work, you should be resting. And suddenly I was thinking about how many times Jesus heals on the Sabbath in just a flagrant way that seems like he only ever heals on the Sabbath, <laughs> just despite everyone sometimes. Right. Um, but when he says, take up your mat and walk, and, you know, the guy goes off doing it, and all the other people are like, he should be resting. He is not <laughs> supposed to. You know what I mean? Like, I, I realize that's not the point of he's the He's been lying on that story. mat for years. I think he's rested already. <laughs> the thing, the but thing just, that but I... just that parallel of upset people saying you should be resting when it's like Jesus himself said, take up your mat and walk, or Jesus said, here's how you should behave. Jesus said, here's what a Christian looks like. And everybody's like, stop. I really That's love the tight little cycle of stop telling people that they have to, whatever, confess their sin or, yeah. mm -hmm. or lay down their lives for their family or stop telling them, whatever it is. And then they say, because all they have to do is look to Christ. And I'm like, which is a thing that you need to do. And when you do it, when you look to Christ, and of course it's only by no. his grace that we ever can look to him in faith. It's yeah. like, it's such a funny, like, stop telling people they have to do something. They must look to Christ right. and rest in Christ, which is a posture that requires <laughs> you to do something. Like you got to put that bitterness down you gotta do yeah. you know well on top basically i think this is a root confusion that a lot of modern evangelicals have about the relationship of grace and works mm -hmm. um there is such a thing as works righteousness where someone's trying to climb up a ladder to heaven right the, yeah. there are people who do that and there are antinomians who want to rest in grace look to christ alone and it doesn't change anything about their life they Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're not taking care of their kids. They're not teaching. They're not correct. They're they're not yeah. doing anything. What are you doing in there? I'm looking to Christ. <laughs> um, well, the Bible says in Titus that instruct the people to be zealous for good works. Mm -hmm. um, we are in Ephesians. God, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So we're not saved by good works, but we are saved. Two good works. Which he prepared in advance for, for us, us to, to walk do. in, which makes it funnier to say, rest, rest, don't walk in those. Right. Well, and it's just, I'm just picturing a crowd nearby saying, how dare you when you're supposed to be resting? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like we see those crowds in the New right. Testament, but they weren't the good guys. Yeah. Right. And so basically, how, how is it possible for God's workmanship to fight the workman while he, you know, you're on the bench? And he's preparing you, fitting you out for the good works, which he prepared for you to do. And you start thinking of the workman working on you on the bench as some sort of legalist because he's going <laughs> to he's going to try to get yeah. you to do something. Yeah. And so then you start fighting him mm -hmm. or fighting people who remind you <laughs> to 
cooperate with the workman. It's a dark place to be, really. This is what he made you for. And and so this goes back to I. one of you girls thought that we needed a, uh, like a Maytag repairman logic. Uh, oh, I did. Yeah, back in the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where we need just someone a logic with a little intervention man, a lo- mm-hmm. logic mm-hmm. intervention mm-hmm. man, yeah. with a little cap and a and a service yeah. coat, yeah. and when someone's in the middle of, well, if you <laughs> emph- if you teach obedience, <laughs> if that word comes out of your mouth, then you are teaching women or anyone. Yeah. You think you to, saved yourself? Yeah, you you're, you're binding consciences, binding consciences, yeah, yeah all of that. Well, Stepford wives. Why it why isn't out. why isn't well. In Romans six, uh, we are saved. We're not under law. We're under grace. But that whole verse says, "For sin shall not be your master, for you're not under law. You're under grace." Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks that being under grace means that you get to sin, and mm-hmm. and they think that being under law means that you that, you can't sin. You don't get that to sin. comes out in but one of backwards. our wild evangelical cultural norms, which is to refer to the days that you don't read your Bible as a grace day. <laughs> 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 like they're like, I'm gonna give myself. But don't grace you think? I think not a lot of this though the weirdly comes full circle back to the emotional control thing because I think a lot of times the people who are mad about this, they probably could pass a theology exam just with flying colors. But what happened is they got their feelings hurt. Yeah, because that's they true. felt convicted and they felt stung. And then they sort of seek refuge in the victim thing mm-hmm. again, which is like, you shouldn't be binding my conscience. Yeah. You're, you look at the villain that you are. And it's not actually an intellectual problem as much as it is an emotional problem. And they haven't figured out how to be honest with their own motivations, subject them to scripture, and maybe... I think it's part of it. Lid on For it Christian sometimes. wives and mothers, the job is so enormous like, mm-hmm. It really is an overwhelming job. Never ending. That the problem is women who can't be kind of, I guess I would say it's the female counterpart to the jolly warrior. The the willingness mm-hmm. to go to battle that might kill you, but still laughing and, and willing to be a failure and think it's okay that you're a failure. Mm-hmm. Because you know that God called you to something that's much bigger than you are. And in his grace, our meager efforts are made much bigger than they are. You know, like we're, yeah. we're trying to do something and he makes it bigger and better. But it's a weird emotional cycle because mom guilt is like a thing people talk, like it's, it's a whole thing. You know, this, oh, mom guilt because I didn't do a birthday cake or I didn't do whatever. And I think it's a weird emotional cycle where women don't have anywhere to put that kind of, I'm a, I'm a failure because I got behind on the laundry or I did whatever. And then they... Uh, Instead of being like, oh, Lord, make me better at this, you know, like I'm going to keep I'm going to keep coming and think it's funny and not get worked up about it. They go in this whole like someone mentioned homemade bread and I'm spiraling out of control because I don't feel like I could do it. And you're saying I have to and it makes me feel guilty. And it, and it is it's a weird cycle of not knowing what it is to be kind of a good soldier for Jesus, like a good, like we're going to keep going keep, and not because we're so on top of everything. There are a lot of, of full grown mothers that you do wish you could do the thing like you would to a little three year old, which is get their chin and say, look in my eyes. Yeah. You're going to not do that. <laughs> we have another question. Yeah. Maybe we could end with if, if someone who's just learning today that emotions were something you could have trained out or <laughs> it's not just up to chaos to decide mm-hmm. right how those things go what, what's something how would you encourage them not only with their family but even themselves so i would i, I would actually start with the latter part so let's say uh, my kids are all teenagers now and they're kind of up and down emotionally and i'm just now learning like we could have addressed that more effectively when they were little and isn't the concrete already dry well, no, sanctification is never sanctification is never out of reach. But the best thing you can do is uh, the chances are pretty good if your kids are sort of wobbly or rickety emotionally, then you and your husband, you and your wife were probably in a similar spot. And instead of telling your kids to straighten up and fly right, show them how it's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, say, okay, we we need to. St- we need to give ourselves to learning these lessons ourselves 
and modeling for our kids how to learn this lesson after the concrete is dry, right? Or, yeah. it, and it's not really dry. We can really, you know, uh, the Lord can jackhammer it up and I would pour say it in slab. a super simple thing for, like, if you're a grown woman who thinks that your emotions are totally rogue and you have no handle on them and it's depressing, it's a good idea to start when you're not having an emotional meltdown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> start in a moment where nothing is happening other than you're sitting there having a calm moment of reflection on how you don't control your emotions. Like have, you're like having that moment. And in that moment, do things like express respect to your husband. Thank him for something. Express like, I appreciate your work or express love and affection for your children. Like these are the things mm -hmm. that I love about you. Let me tell you what I think God gave us in you. That's such a gift. And Very then good. express gratitude. Like just don't, and don't try to go on any wild rides on your, on it just start working towards like, it's kind of like a surveyor going out and putting some stakes in the ground. Like we have a big field here, but we could put one here that says, this is a good, pl yeah. this is part of the, what should well, be here. And I think too, I mean, if you imagine some big massive overgrown tangled hedge or something, you can still get in there and start cleaning out some of the things that don't need to be there and training the other ones and stuff. So it seems like often your emotional collapses are entirely predictable. Mm -hmm. So if you know the thing that is going to make you do it, identify that and then just start working on that one. That's like weeding out the one Blog. that like, mm -hmm. we don't need to have this part of the bush. We're gonna get rid of that one. And like you're saying, here's some like simple things to- Start chipping away. Yeah. I was gonna say, if we're talking about emotional imbalances and here we are gathered right before Thanksgiving. And if there are ladies out there like, there, you could probably get on a whiteboard and write out the oh, yeah. potential that you have uh, coming up. <clears throat> what's likely to be a thing. And if you know yourself to be out of control, right now, <laughs> start working on what is, what is likely to cause that. Could I ask my husband for counsel about what he wishes I would stop doing on Thanksgiving or no. what, or who am I trying to manipulate or whatever, but like, just be objective about it and ask the Lord to honor your pitiful efforts to try to do that. And there's no time that you actually ask God to bless you and give you strength for something that he does not. Ask, ask your husband, what would you prefer, the dressing or me not freaking out over the dressing? I think everyone <laughs> yeah. prefers a perfectly done <clears throat> turkey with a hostess who's flipping out <laughs> than, than a little bit dry turkey <laughs> where there's joy in the um, house. No. There's a proverb about that, which is not a promise. So... so um, I think that, well, thank you very much for yes, uh, being yes. here. Thank you to Nate for the time that he was here. <laughs> His interventions are pretty weak. He leaves, he leaves before he's even yes. done with it. I was not persuaded. <laughs> <laughs>